Um, hey, Neha. Hi, Joey. Um, I'm Neha Narula. I'm the director of the DCI. And I'm Joey Ito, the director of the MIT Media Lab. Yeah, and we're here today to talk about the DCI, yeah. which is the Digital Currency Initiative here at the Media Lab, um, how we got started, and about the digital currency, cryptocurrency, blockchain space, right? So yeah, so you know, I actually wasn't here when the DCI got started. So Joey, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a little bit more about you know you founded this two mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? What where did it come from? Yeah, so I I was into cryptocurrencies really early in the 90s when Digicash came out. So I kind of had a, uh, an interest in it, but I kind of was looking at the Bitcoin blockchain thing without really being that excited about it. And then Jeremy Rubin, who we both know, yeah. um, he's, he was one of the founders of the Bitcoin Club, which is a student activity here at MIT. And at a food camp, he was kind of really excited about it and talking about it. And, um, and so I was pretty late actually to the Bitcoin um, thing. But, but he was hanging out at the Media Lab, and so we were starting to pay attention to the Bitcoin thing when the Bitcoin Foundation was having problems, and it was sort of imploding. And I was talking to a bunch of people, including people at Stanford and other places, about maybe trying to create support for the core developers who uh, I thought was, it was important that they were independent, and that one of the important functions of the Bitcoin Foundation was to support the independent core developers. Um, and so initially I was trying to get a fund so that they could go any, to any university, but because the time constraint and because all of the core developers that were funded by the foundation said they'd be happy to come work at MIT, um, <laughs> we sort of s stitched together this uh, initiative. Initially it was just to fund them, but we f decided that you know actually having a non-profit um, academic hub to do this sort of work was important. Yeah, and like talk about that a little bit more, like independence, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, why is that so important in this space? Why is it so important to have academic institutions mm -hmm. and independent developers and things like that? So, so you know, it, this sort, sort of goes to my internet background because, and, it, and to me, because I did a lot of internet stuff, everything looks like the internet. But on the internet, it was really important that we had these layers of open interoperable standards. So you have like Ethernet and TCP IP and, and um, HTML and the web standards. And they generally came out of um, you know, government funded or academic funded or basically not for profit groups who are just trying to design it the right way. And you know, without IP encumbrance and things like that. And I, I think it's important to have a bunch of people who just care about getting it technically right um, to get it started at least. Um, and, I, and I felt like in the cryptocurrency space, um, so much of the activity was around, um, was being fueled by startups or big companies. And I am still worried that we're not gonna get to standardization. Now, Bitcoin is really different from the internet in some ways, but but I feel like, it, like you know, we, we can talk about this if you want, but like yeah. your, your audit of uh, IOTA, right? Yeah. I mean, like who's gonna go around and audit these things? Yeah. One, who cares enough about it? Yeah. And two, if you're auditing a competitor's thing, you're clearly biased, right? Yeah. So, so, so who who can be a neutral party in something like that? Yeah, and you know that kind of like mirrors my own story too, because um, I got in this space fairly late as well, right? But after you did, and I think it was around two years ago um, in 2015, and I read your article actually on why Bitcoin is and is not like the internet, and I read that, and that like I started to see the space in a different way, you know, because I think a lot of people thought it was just about money for so long and money still is an incredibly important part of it. But it's also got, you know, all these other, it's this open protocol and these layers that we like to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when I read your article that kind of like crystallized something in my head and then of course, I got kind of pulled into the DCI, mm -hmm. and and now here we are. Yep. But um, but yeah, I th I really feel like we have a different kind of take on it than a lot of other people yeah. with the layers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, you know we we want things to be simple, and we want like we're really thinking about it from the internet days, right? Mm -hmm. And so so why is that so important? Why is this sim mm -hmm. simple layering approach so important? Well, yeah, and I mean I I think I think that. Um, um, the, the, the network effect that you get out of everybody using the same protocol, the fact that we don't have four different types of TCP IP. I, I still remember when we had Apple Talk and Token Ring and all these different yeah. networks and, and the computers like my Macintosh couldn't talk to my yeah. Windows machine, right? Yeah. So, so that's stupid. Um, 
obviously there are different ways to do it. You can use Lightning Network. There's different ideas of how you might create networks of networks. My hypothesis is though that I still remember when email, you could go across different networks using things like UCP and stuff like that. So there are ways to make networks of networks, but I think in the end, having everyone concentrated on uh, a single standard yeah. uh, makes a lot of sense when you're when it's a system that's trying to communicate with each other. And yeah. and what you need is you need a place for all these different people to convene, in, including the corporate interests, but also the government and everybody else. And it's got to be something that's not trying to make money because like when we talk to the central banks, you know, they don't yeah. like they like us because we're not trying to sell them something. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's something um, you know, and again, I, I think startups and for profits are important because they're the ones that build the business on top of these layers or between yeah. the sandwich. But um, like, like for instance, we've never been able to get a really good ID system because no one like you know, Google doesn't want to use Facebook's ID. Yeah. Facebook doesn't want, I mean, and OAuth is getting close, but it takes forever because they don't yeah. trust each other. And it's it's like such a slow, laborious process, and we look at these groups, right? Like the you know there are these groups that have developed to kind of shepherd these protocols, but they weren't there at the very beginning necessarily. At the very yeah. beginning, it was like a group of really passionate, kind of spread out people in all these different areas, right? Mm -hmm. Who had to come together. And you you mentioned like TCP IP and token ring. You know, I was kind of I've been like trying to read about the history of open protocols, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting to see what ends up winning because mm -hmm. it's not always the best tech yeah. it's not always like the best design mm -hmm. it's sometimes like with token ring and ethernet it was like oh ethernet hardware's cheaper and the cables are cheaper yeah. right <laughs> yeah well, so, so, so it's, it's interesting because i think it's like you said it's, it's inclusion mm -hmm. right like when we built you know our, the internet service provider in japan the, the thing that was awesome was so we were you know, this is like old old people talk but like you know <laughs> x25 which was a competing protocol at the time, you literally had to push the specs around on a dolly. There was so much yeah. junk, right? Yeah. And so many contracts. Whereas, you mean like the specification of how X25 worked? Works, okay, right. Yeah, and yeah. You, you had to be a big, huge company with thousands of engineers to actually turn that into code. Yeah. Whereas the internet was these little two or three page RFCs, and they were, they were humble, request <laughs> for comment, and a bunch of students could kind of figure out how to use it. We could mm -hmm. buy used junk hardware on, the, on, on, on mailing lists and put it together. And so it's like that, I think, with Ethernet and other things where, you know, I mean, we built token ring networks and stuff like that, but the ability to write your own software and hack the stuff together was yeah. really important. I think the lack of IP encumbrance allowed entrance, like new companies also eventually. And, but also I think it's the community. So like, you know, I can't hit all this, you know, like political stuff, but the really cool part of ICANN was the people working on the names and numbers, people working on the routing tables, people working on security, and they were the best. Um, and they hung out because they liked each other and they were the best. And so the reason why I'm kind of a Bitcoin blockchain maximalist <laughs> is that I think that there are just more people who are excited about this stuff in that community. So you just, you just they attract more. There's like a gravity well. Now, yeah. sometimes you can get, blow it up by pop drama or other things but for now i think it does have it does have kind of a critical mass yeah and you and i are like like you really believe that and i'm kind of like still on the fence i think a little mm -hmm. bit about what which one's gonna win just because i know which one i think is the right design and the mm -hmm. best technology and the most secure and, and sort of that stuff right now mm -hmm. but I am very cognizant of the fact that the best design and security doesn't always make mm -hmm. it. And it is about the community. And the Bitcoin community is so <laughs> strange. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. like rejects any sort of leadership. Yeah. I think that's every, like I, you know, there's been so much drama and there's been so many like attempts to do different things. And every single person I've seen who's tried to be the savior of Bitcoin mm -hmm. has just gotten ejected from the community yeah. like really fast, well, like spit back out or yeah. something. But, but then I talk to people like Corey Fields yeah. or like Vlad and, yeah, who just, and they're, great. they're like rocks, yeah. right? And those are the people who I, I think end up not you know, they don't exercise political power that much, but they're actually the, the sort of the, the, the bedrock of the community they're in building some ways, stuff. right? They're yeah. building stuff. And, yeah. and when you go to a lot of these communities, often the people who actually are respected are the people who are doing a lot of the work, right? Yeah. So, um, so I, I think that sometimes, you know, you get attacks on the community of people coming in trying to fix everything. Yeah. But in a way, they do get, you know, pushed away. Um, I, I'm also sort of skeptical about whether the community will be able to pull itself together. I mean, I do think that, 
you had leadership like John Postel and others who, you know, for a while were doing all the names and numbers and um, and with and, I can, and, yes, I can. Yes. And, and and also, you know, we had ten or twenty years before the money people got around, yeah. and so we, we could actually kind of hang around and be a little hippie for a while on the internet. Whereas right now, you've kind of got the worst of all worlds. Money with, was there from the very beginning. Money, yeah. Well, it's about money, yeah. right? And then like you know, you've got these cryptocurrencies that have billions of dollars of value of kind of angry internet yeah. people. Yeah. So they haven't. They, so so it, so it is it is different. It's it's a little bit more toxic in many ways. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was just like an announcement today that um, the Raiden network, which is kind of like Ethereum's version of Lightning, is mm -hmm. doing an ICO, yeah, and you know, and and so every, it's it's like, it's it's hard because um, and we were just talking about this in our office. Open source developers, you know, there's not really an opportunity for them to make a lot of money doing this. They don't mm -hmm. do it for money. They do it because they really love yeah. it and they want to do it. But then in this space, you see all these people out there raising tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions mm -hmm. of dollars. And it's just like, what is going on right now, yeah. right? Well, that's the thing. I mean, money corrupts. Yeah. Right? And, and I think that the, the real kind of problem with all this is that cryptocurrencies are sort of fundamentally about money. And so it, it has this really weird dynamic of, of you know, like enticing people yeah. um, to take a path um, where they could see their work converted into cash. And it's, it's really hard not to take that because even if you have a family, you almost have a a family responsibility yeah. to care about care about money, right? So, yeah. so I I I, th I think it's you know, I think this ICO thing. So I do think it's 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 bad. Um, I think there's a lot of scamminess just looking at the people who are getting scammed and um, and so on. So I do think in the short run, you know, I it's it's bad. Um, but a lot of stuff starts out bad. So yeah. I think in the long run, it's possible that we figure out a structure. Where um, it's it's um, it doesn't necessarily have to be externally regulated, but at least self-regulated in a way that um, um, you can't. That's harder to scam. I think it needs to become more scam resistant. It has to make it so that you can't just people can't. Um, it, I think you want to take the speculation out of it yeah. and figure out a way for things like ICOs to actually be valuable in the operation of something useful. Um, right. But I don't think that's. And That's I think what's happening right I now. think the onus is on so like I I agree right now if you're doing an ICO I'm immediately kind of suspicious and I think the onus is on you to prove that there's like a good mm -hmm. reason for mm -hmm. your token existing and how that interacts mm -hmm. with yeah. um, with what you're building for sure um, and yeah and I think things will definitely get better as we move forward ICO by the way is an initial coin offering for anyone listening who might not know what that mm -hmm. is and it's like this ability to issue your own token and you said something you said this is all speculation right now but isn't money fundamentally speculation well it's one category right the, the, there's a certain category well so finance and investment is about speculation but money is also used to uh, do transactions and and you could have one penny and if it yeah. moved fast enough it could take care of everybody's transactions but it, no one would be speculating on that penny so speculation is just one piece of money and then the other is just accounting unit of account right so so if I'm just trying to log the uh, uh, my my inventory and, and things like that. Y you also use you know money, and so 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 there's a lot of different things for money, and you can actually make it so that money can't be or h is harder to speculate on by making it less liquid by putting restrictions on it. So yeah. So and I think the problem is that speculation is the easiest way to make money. Yeah. Which is the greatest fool's theory that somebody dumb is going to buy it from you for more. But that, but but that will create a bubble, and that will pop. And but the but the but the architecture of the technology underneath, it, it, it's that's not going to break. And so the internet, remember when it popped once? Yeah. The Dow went all the way back to pre-internet prices, and we've had several of those. So, yeah. So I, I think you know we're going to go through cycles on this as well, and it will yeah. scare away some. I know. People. I personally cannot wait for the bubble to pop because I think it'll clear out a lot of sort of like the underbrush from the forest, and yeah, then the yeah. trees can grow, right? Um, I think it'll be really good once the bubble does pop. I, but like, you can't catch a falling knife, right? So who knows when <laughs> this is? Who knows when this is actually going to happen? Um, yeah. So so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. The technology is what's what interests me too. It's almost like money is like like cryptocurrencies are programmable money and tokens are programmable equity and mm -hmm. like the combination of that is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, I think we only have like a minute or so left. So 
should we say anything else about the DCI? Well, we're going to be doing a few more of these, hopefully. Not all of them will have Joey, though, which this is really awesome. Um, and we're going to talk about ICOs. We're going to talk about digital fiat currency. And we're going to talk about uh, Lightning Network and, and a lot of other stuff that we're going to be working on. Um, you should leave comments if you have things yeah. you'd like us to talk about. Yeah. And go to the website and join the Facebook group. Yeah, yeah, join the Facebook group. And um, yeah, tell us what you think about this and what we should talk about and how we should do it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, thanks, thanks Joey. Yeah.